Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. In this video, we're going to explore the concept of adornments that make your cabinets worth more. Let's get started. There are actually two basic construction methods for cabinets that you find. One's called frameless and one's face frame. And frankly, the box inside doesn't matter to the machine. But face frame cabinets give you a unique opportunity. Now, the face frame is composed of styles and rails. The vertical members are called styles, and typically they're just rectangular cross sections, but they don't have to be. I could actually incorporate a 3D shape into a style and give that cabinet a furniture look, and that's what I call adornment. And the concept is it enables you to charge more for your work, and the machine does the work for you. Let me show you how to set that up in the software. I wanted to incorporate some kind of turning on this style. So here's where I found this. I went to clip art, and lo and behold, that's spindle five right there. So when, when I drug that up, that's what I got. So that's where the shape came from. Okay, now I took that shape and went into uh, Rhino and revolved it. And I'll show you what that looks like. There's the turning when you revolve it. And so it, I revolved it and then put these flats on there. So that's basically what I started now. I scaled it to the size I wanted because I wanted, I wanted that style to be 30 inches. So I scaled the turning to that and then saved it as a Rhino file because uh, VCAR Pro allows you to bring Rhino files in. Now, let me show you how I actually brought it in. Let's take a look at VCAR Pro and I'll show you how you bring the 3D model in. First off, create the job. And one of the things I wanna do is, I'm gonna do a finish pass and I, it's a solid wood part. So I wanna leave a certain amount of material for that. So it's, I'm gonna leave about an eighth of an inch. So then I want, I want the job to be a slightly bigger. So I set the material as 30 and a quarter by three and three quarters by 1.33 thick. Uh, this fixture board is going to be Z0, and we'll set that up. So that's what that is. Now, let me show you what you do. You go to modeling, you go to that folder, and you find that's the turning. VCAR brings it in like this by default, so we need to make it aligned. So the first thing I'm going to do is rotate it 90 degrees. That looks pretty good. I'm going to say center model. And then I'm actually gonna go over here and say, okay, import, and I'm gonna tell it to just discard below the center. So that becomes my model. So that's what I'm bringing in, okay? Now, so that's half of the turning. There's a problem with that, and it's too thick because my material's not that thick. So remember, I've got 1.33. Well, about three-fourths of it is going to be the thickness of the face frame, so that's protected. But here's what you can do. You can open this up. And you can actually change this, and I'm just gonna say 0.51, somewhere like that's where it came out. And look what, what happens now, that becomes a stylized turning. So that's what I'm actually gonna make. So that's where that shape came from. Before we get into the 3D tool pathing, I wanna show you something about machining solid wood. And this is probably the first thing I had to learn when I started CNC routing like 100 years ago. And that's how you deal with end grain. So think about what you've got. You've got this great big piece of wood here. The grain's running this way. And plywood, you can just go around a part. It's not a problem. Well, sometimes in solid wood, especially if it's brittle, it'll break these corners. So what I want to do is I want to start with my blank about a quarter inch bigger each way. So that gives me an eighth. And so I'm gonna leave that material to cut off later. Now, the key to this is you make this cut first, and then, see, so, and I'm gonna do a climb cut. I'm using a three flute finisher uh, from Vortex, and then I'm gonna make this cut, so it's gonna go across here and here, and then that'll be the third pass. Let me show you in simulation what that does. So here's your end. We'll simulate that, you can kinda of see it. So that cuts the first end and then this cuts that corner, and then the final pass does this. And so that gives you beautiful edges, and it'll, it'll be just like you ran on a, on a joiner. Now let's go back over and turn our model back on so you can see it again. And let's talk about how we're gonna tool path the 3D part. Well, first off, let's go to here, then let's bring this up. And this part's really important right here. All right, this tells you where the model is within the volume of material. So my material is 1.33. 
Okay, now, this the gap below is the material thickness of my face frames. So my face frame material is 0.7825. So you put that, that makes the little edge the right thickness. So you have to do that. And then this determines uh, where your model is within that volume. So you have to get that done first. Now let's take a look at our actual 3D tool passing. So that's what the model is going to look like. And remember when you're doing 3D, the tool path gets projected down to that. But there's one thing that I need to also explain, and that's how you deal with where the model is within that volume. You see, if I move this up and down, see how that moves it in the, inside in there? Well, the critical part is like 0 0.78. How, how thick is your how thick is your face frame? In my case, it's 0.78. So that basically puts that model down here and that leaves that part on the edge the correct thickness. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, I hit OK. It'll wanna, I'm not going to recalculate all that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is a rough finish pass. And so that's what this is. Let's open it up. Okay, I'm using a quarter inch ball nose tool. I'm going to leave 40 thousandths. And the reason I'm doing that is so that it doesn't take so much uh, load on the small tool when I do the 3D. Selected vectors, so I basically picked a piece of geometry and said, I want you to tool path anything inside of that. Remember, the tool path gets projected down to the 3D model. Okay, so that's how that was done. And I left a 50% step over. So when you watch the simulation of that, it will look like this. Let's reset that. When you watch the simulation, that's what's gonna happen. All right, then once we do that, then we do a finish tool path. And that's what this looks like. And this time I'm using an eighth inch tapered ball nose. Once again, I'm selecting the vector to control it. And uh, that's pretty much it. And let's watch the simulation on that. And, and that's what's happened now. <clears throat> typically, if you run this in two directions, you get a better result long term. So the first thing I did was I had it come across this way. And that does pretty well, but, but usually if you'll do another pass in a different direction, it'll make it smoother. And so that's what I did that second pass. All right, then finally, once that was done, then we did the solid wood part. So that cut the end, and then that took that, that little corner, so that took care of our end grain. All that's left is back here, and we'll do that. And there's our finished part. Now, let's go out to the machine and let's run the files and let's make this part.
our adornment project came out really nice. The style on the right is a traditional face frame style. The style on the left over here is actually our adornment. So we actually made that out of a thicker piece of wood and it's, it's all one piece. I did this because I wanted to show you what you can do with a router other than just make boxes. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaver.com. Thank you for watching.